Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at the Linear Technologies LTC1799. It's a low cost precision oscillator. With this particular model the frequency is variable from 1 kilohertz to 33 megahertz. It's got a 50% duty cycle, a square wave output in a SOPT 2.3 package. So I soldered this today, had the board from Farnell so if I'll give you an idea of the size of the chip, there we are, that's my pen tip, a regular pen. So I've had to source this oscillator because some downfalls or shortfalls on microelectronics as compiler, or certainly the Micro C Pro for PIC32. This video is not about microelectronics compiler shortfalls, but there are a couple of oscillators in the PIC32, for example a RefCon. Uh, an RO divide, they are reference oscillator control registers. It enables one of the oscillators to be output on one of the pins and you can control the oscillator frequency, divide it up or down, that sort of stuff. Had I had that function, I might have been able to, I might have had more success with a color camera. Anyway, that aside, this is about this oscillator and nothing else. So with a wide operating frequency from 1 kHz up to 33 megs, it can run a stepper motor as a clock source uh, or my color camera at 33 megs. Anything, anything you need a clock source for. Well you can see how I've got a, a 25 ton 1 meg ohm potentiometer soldered to the board. I'll show you the part numbers later. I'll list them below. So as you can see it's a simple 5 wire device. Let's see if we can get a pointer in here. This first pin is the power, middle pin's the ground, and there's a 0.1 microfarad decoupling cap on the back of this board. This pin is the set the frequency with this potentiometer from power to this pin. And then these two pins on the right. The top one is the frequency out, and the bottom pin is the divider. So if I've currently got it connected to power, 5 volt supply which divides the clock frequency by 100. If you leave it open it divides the clock frequency by 10 and if you ground it it divides the clock frequency by 1. So as I say that this oscillator runs from 1 kilohertz to 33 meg. So with it connected to the supply I'm dividing the output by 100, so I've turned the pot all the way one direction, so I've got one kilohertz output. Right, that's the decoupling cap on the back, and there's the output. So you can see 1.01 kilohertz, that's a period, obviously, duty cycle flashing between 49.98 and 50%, and peak to peak, 5.2 volts. I'm currently running it off my regular power supply. See the 5 volt supply there. So if I turn this 25 turn pot, I'm not going to do the whole 25 turns, just to give you an idea. That's about 2 turns, 3, 4, 5 turns. You can see we're up to 2.7k and with regards to jitter I think they, they quote a very low jitter you can see for the most part even with that dotty 25 turn pot and long leads from the power supply we've got 2.75 kilohertz and just the lower two bits flickering a bit right I've Wound the potentiometer up to 10 kilohertz. So what I'll do, the, the frequency select or frequency divider wire, it's currently connected to a 5 volt supply. So I'll disconnect that, and you can see the frequency has jumped up by 10, so we've got 100.5 kilohertz. And if I now connect, so that wire is now open. If I now connect it to ground, we are now up at 10 megs, or 10.3 megs. So at this range, the potentiometer becomes very sensitive. 
So what I'll now do is wind it up to the limit. See, this is only like a, a fraction of a turn now and it's making a big difference. And you can see the square waves, some small bit of rigging rounded off a bit. And this is just a fraction of a turn on the part. You can see it jumps rapidly because we're not dividing the frequency down, so small changes make a big difference with the part. So if I go leaving it on that setting, so not dividing it, we'll see what happens. So we've got square waves at two megs. Six, seven, eight, fourteen. Obviously, you choose a fixed resistor, put a smaller value pot, get finer adjustments. Eighteen megs. Twenty nine. 34 so that's above the manufacturer's spec they quote 1 kilohertz to 33 meg so that's a 34 now that OV camera would actually still synchronize with a sine wave it's becoming a sine wave you can see I must be at the end of the travel on this 1 meg 2510 pot because as I say the specs 1k to 33 meg so we've gone over the 33 And that's where the pot must be becoming open circuit. It jumped up to 54 meg, look. But still, if you want a cheap 54 meg oscillator, not a sine wave by the time it's up at that frequency. But I expected loads of hassle with ringing, that sort of stuff. You know, especially on the long leads I've got and you know, that cheap power supply. And I haven't got it. It's fantastic. That's back down to 24 megs. So we've still got a 51% duty cycle. So you can see 10 megs, a fairly clean square wave, clean enough. As I say, I could do with a finer adjustment potentiometer, sort of one turn or 10 turn. So if I let go, we've still got fairly nice square waves at 25 megs. That's about the limit, that's the spec for the device. So 33 megs. So it's not bad, one kilohertz to 33 megs. As I say, the select wire is ground at the moment, so it's not dividing the signal. As I say, it's a one meg pot, 25 turn, but depending on your application, you'd obviously pick some resistors and put the potentiometer in the middle. I can't think of any application where you'd want the full range of this device up from 1 meg up to 33 or 1 kilohertz up to 33 megs so you'd obviously pick your frequency choose some fixed resistors and a small potentiometer in the middle with better accuracy to get your frequency so overall I'm impressed so here's a quick look at the datasheet linear technologies LTC 1799, 1 kHz to 33 megs. They give you the frequency errors there, 
5 kilohertz to 20 megs, 5 to 20 frequency error. And there is the simple circuit drawing. So 5 pins. As I say, the it's a TSOT 23. They say, look, this is the actual size, but I've got this page zoomed into 130%, so zoom back out to 100. See my pen there, and that's the size. And there's the real device. So if you need an adjustable oscillator, take a look at the LTC 1799 Linear Technologies. Fantastic. Thank you very much for watching.